this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about chemical equilibrium. In today's video we will discuss the reaction quotient and also we will go through an exercise on chemical equilibrium in the case of large equilibrium constant K. So this is going to be the third video of a series of five videos on this chapter. Please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now if the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, this means that the reaction favors the product since we have mentioned that the equilibrium constant expression is equal to the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So if the expression is greater than 1, this means that the numerator, which, mean, which is the uh, concentration of products, is greater than the concentration of reactants. Now, if the equilibrium constant is way less than 1, this means that the reaction favors the reactants, so the denominator in the expression of K is greater than the numerator, so which means that the concentration of reactants is way greater than the concentration of products. Note that, that the size of K, which is determined by thermodynamic factor, and the time taken to reach equilibrium, which is determined by the reaction rate, are not directly related. Now let's discuss the reaction quotient. Now the reaction quotient expression is written the same way as the uh, equilibrium constant expression. However, we use the initial concentrations. So the reaction quotient Q for this reaction is written by the initial concentration of NH3 to the power 2 divided by the initial concentration of N2 multiplied by the initial concentration of hydrogen to the power 3. Now remember that for the uh, equilibrium constant expression we use the equilibrium concentrations for Q we use the initial concentrations now if the value of Q is equal to value of K this means that the system is at equilibrium however if the value calculated for Q is less than K this means that the system has too much reactants and therefore the system will, will shift to the right side to make more product now, if the value of Q is greater than the value of K, this means that the system has too much product. So therefore, the system will shift to the left side to consume the product and therefore to reach equilibrium where Q will be equal to K. Now we can discuss this in another way. Just put K on an axis and then find Q. If Q is less than K, this means Q has to come to the right side to be equal to K. This means the system has to shift right. And if Q is greater than K, this means that Q has to shift to the left side to be equal to K. This means that the system will shift to the left. Now let's solve an exercise on chemical equilibrium in a case where the equilibrium constant K is large. So suppose 6 moles of fluorine and 3 moles of hydrogen are mixed in 3 liter container to make hydrogen fluoride where the equilibrium constant is equal to 1.15 times 10 to the power 2. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Now I'm going to show you step by step how we can solve an exercise like this. In step 1, you just write the balanced equation for the reaction. So it's going to be H2 plus F2, it gives 2HF. In step 2, write the expression of the equilibrium constant. So it's going to be equal to the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. Now note here that the concentration of HF has to be to the power 2 because the coefficient is 2. In step 3, list the initial concentrations so initially we have uh, to find the concentrations of hydrogen and fluorine because we are given the number of moles so we just divided by the volume to get the concentration so we have one molar of hydrogen we have two molars of fluorine and of course at the beginning we don't have hf so the concentration is equal to zero now in step four you calculate Q and determine the direction of the shift of the equilibrium. Now in this case, we really don't need to find Q because the concentration of HF is equal to zero, so definitely Q is going to be equal to zero. So if Q is equal to zero, this means that Q is less than K, and therefore the equilibrium will shift to the right side. Now in step five, use I's table to determine the amount of reactants that will react 
use an unknown x and determine the equilibrium concentrations so we have said that initially we have one molar h2 two molar f2 and we have zero molar hf so after the reaction proceeds we will have minus x molar for h2 minus x molar for f2 and plus 2x molar of hf now at the equilibrium we will have one molar minus x for hydrogen 2 molar minus x for fluorine and 2x for HF. Now we list these concentrations as the equilibrium concentrations. In step 6, we will just replace these concentrations by their values in the expression of the equilibrium constant and find x. And x will be equal to 0.968 molar. Therefore, we can find now the equilibrium concentrations for hydrogen, we'll find it equal to 0.032 molar. For fluorine, it's going to be equal to 1.032 molar. And for HF, it's going to be equal to 1.936 molar. So now that we have the equilibrium concentrations, we can do a reality check. So use these concentrations to find the equilibrium constant value. So the one that we find is 1.13 times 10 to the power 2, which is very close to the given value of k, which is 1.15 times 10 to the power 2. I hope this video was helpful to you. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.